Hi again and welcome back. In this video, we'll be learning about the passive and middle voices. So far, all of our Greek verbs have been in the active voice. The subject performs the verbal action. So for example, in English, we can say, Claire, the subject, is going to the store. And Claire is the one doing the going. Or we can say, Ricardo often makes dinner. And Ricardo, the subject, is doing the making of the dinner. But some verbs can also be used in the passive voice. In the passive voice, the subject of the verb is actually the receiver of the action, not the one performing the action. In English, we express this by combining some form of the verb to be with the past participle of the verb. So we could say, Claire is carried to the store. Now, Claire isn't the one doing the carrying. She's the one receiving the carrying. She's the one being carried, even though she's the subject of the verb. Similarly, we can say Ricardo is served dinner. That doesn't mean Ricardo is doing the serving. It means someone else is doing the serving and Ricardo, the subject of the verb, is receiving the, the dinner, the action of serving. But there's still the grammatical subjects of those verbs, even though someone else is performing the verbal action and it's directed at Claire and Ricardo. Well, before we talk about how the uh, passive vo voice works in Greek, uh, let's look at the primary middle and passive endings. We're going to see these not just with the present tense, but they're going to come in handy with several other tenses down the road. The first person singular ending is my. The second person singular ending is psi. The third person singular ending is tai. And in the plural, we have metha, estha, and entai. My, psi, tai, metha, estha, entai. If we add on the common present tense uh, connecting vowels, we get the endings omai, a, etai, onatha, estha, ontai. Now, you will have noticed that I've highlighted the second person singular, a, because it doesn't look very much at all like the psi that I said was the basic uh, second person singular middle passive ending. What's happened? Well, when the epsilon uh, comes up against the psi ending, it seems like the sigma makes the epsilon and, and uh, alpha combine and uh, hides itself. So what we end up with is no sigma, but instead uh, the epsilon and alpha combining to make a lengthened eta. Uh, since the sigma has disappeared and we've got this long vowel, this long eta, the iota at the end of the psi ending drops under as an iota subscript. So we're not actually going to see that uh, true ending psi uh, in very many places. And this is, this is one example of how that psi ending collapses uh, in the present middle passive. Here are some examples of present middle passive forms. Uh, here again, we're using the verb uh, luo. And we can uh, say in the first person singular, uh, I am set free or I am loosed. Luamai, uh, second person, Lue, third person, Luatai. Uh, in the plural, the first person, we are set free, Luamatha. In the second person, Luestha. And in the third person, Luantai. But when we use a verb in the passive voice, how do we know who's actually performing the action? If the subject is the one receiving the action, Who's the one doing it? In English, we use the preposition by to identify the agent behind a passive verb. So we say Claire is being carried to the store by her horse. Her horse is actually the one doing the carrying and Claire, the subject, is the one receiving the action of carrying. In Greek, very similarly, the agent of a passive verb is identified using the preposition hypo. So we can say, ha artos feretai hypomarias. The bread, ha artos, 
is being carried, ferretai, by Maria, hupo Marias. Or we can say, blepomai, hupo gunaikos. Uh, I am usually seen by a woman. And notice that the subject, I, uh, is just implicit in the first person singular ending of that passive verb, blepomai. I am usually seen, hypogynaikos, by a woman. The agent here is in the genitive case after the, the preposition hypo, and in this kind of position, following a, a preposition, the genitive case doesn't have a normal genitive meaning. Uh, following a preposition, the case just acts like a switch, activating the meaning by for the preposition. So as soon as you see a preposition, uh, and you see a genitive case following it, you should essentially ignore the genitive case and just pay attention to the meaning of the preposition. We can also express agency in Greek with a different preposition. We can also express agency in Greek with a different preposition, dia. Dia will again be followed by a genitive nominal, and dia in this situation expresses an intermediate agent. So if you introduce the agent with dia, that agent probably isn't the ultimate source of the action, just the immediate cause of the action. So sometimes it's best to translate dia with through instead of by. So for example, we can say thusia didotai dia dulumu. A sacrifice, thusia, is being offered, didotai, by my slave, dia dulumu. Because dia is used, we know that the sacrifice probably wasn't the slave's idea. Maybe the slave didn't pay for the sacrifice, but someone else sent him and he's just the one actually making the offering. One other thing to think about when we're using the prepositions hupo or dia to express uh, the agent of a passive verb is that the final vowel can drop off of a preposition if the next word starts with a vowel. And what happens is that that final vowel of the preposition is replaced with an apostrophe, just like contractions work in English. So for example, if we wanted to say by him, hupo autu, the omicron at the end of the preposition hupo would actually drop off. Why? Because autu begins with a vowel. And so we replace the omicron at the end of hupo with an apostrophe, and it becomes hoop autu. Similarly, dia auto, uh, through him, would become di auto, with an apostrophe in place of the alpha at the end of dia. How do I type the apostrophe? Well, unfortunately, there isn't a good apostrophe in the standard Greek keyboards, so my advice is just to switch back to the English keyboard, type the apostrophe, and switch again to your Greek keyboard to continue typing the Greek. Another kind of action, in addition to passive voice, is reflexive action. Sometimes, I'm the agent performing the action, and I'm the one receiving the action. I'm performing an action on myself. Um, there are two helper words that we can use to express reflexive action in Greek. One is heautos, heaute, heauton. And this is the uh, reflexive pronoun, himself, herself, or itself. Uh, it's just like the pronoun autos, but with an extra prefix, the rough breathing over the prefixed epsilon, he. Uh, we can use this as the object of a verb to express reflexive action. And so if I say uh, histesi he auton, I'm saying he stands himself up. Or in English, we might just say he stands up. But he's both the one doing the standing uh, and the one receiving the standing, so to speak. Uh, we also have another uh, pronoun, alaylon. This means one another or each other. 
And so we can say, Egerus and Alelon. That means they are starting to lift one another, Alelon, one another. We also have a first person singular and second person singular reflexive pronoun. The first person singular form is emautos, emaute, emauton, and this means myself. Notice that the form here is just like heautos, but instead of the he prefix, now we have the m prefix, emautos. And you might be able to remember the meaning of this if you notice that m looks a little bit like the English me spelled backwards. So for example, histemi emauton, that means I am standing myself, emauton, up. The second person singular form is seautos, seaute, seauton, yourself. And again, this is just like heautos, but with the prefix se instead of the he prefix that we saw in the third person. And the se looks even more like the pronoun su, which you remember meant you. So histes seauton would mean you are standing yourself seauton up. In some cases, like reflexive action, it's not really accurate to call the verb either passive or active. Uh, the agent is the same one receiving the action. In Greek, we have a, a separate middle voice uh, that we can use to express this. And sometimes the middle voice is for reflexive action, as we've just been looking at. And so we can say luometha, using the middle passive form, and that can mean we set ourselves free. We're the ones doing the setting free, and we're also the ones being set free, receiving it. We're doing it to ourselves. And that reflexive idea can be implicit just in that middle passive ending. Now the trick here is that luometha could also mean we are being set free. Because in the present tense, the same forms are used for the passive voice and for this middle voice. And so we have to infer from context which is more likely. Um, but reflexive action isn't the only kind of action that uh, Greek expresses with the middle voice. Sometimes uh, in English we would use an active verb to express an action that in Greek is expressed with a middle voice verb. Um, so for example, we could say te corinthe paruantai. Uh, and in English we would just use an active verb going. They are going to Corinth. Sometimes these are called deponent verbs by Greek teachers, and by deponent what's meant is that the meaning is active, but the form is middle. Uh, we're, we're going to call them middle-only verbs, or true middle verbs, though, because really this has more to do with how uh, English and Greek speakers conceive of the actions themselves, rather than it being a, an active meaning expressed with a, a middle form, we should think of, of uh, the Greeks as understanding movement as a sort of semi-reflexive uh, kind of thing, where I'm moving myself. So a Greek speaker wouldn't say, oh, this is an active meaning expressed by a middle verb. A Greek speaker, speaker would say, no, uh, I'm the one doing the moving and I'm the one receiving the moving, so this is a truly middle kind of action. Uh, it's just that in English we conceive of the action slightly differently. So when we translate it, we have to use the active verb going. So is a verb passive or middle? Again, the passive voice and the middle voice use the same verb endings. So how do we tell them apart? Well, one way is just by asking, is this verb middle only? If it is, then generally a, a middle only verb won't have a passive voice. Uh, if the dictionary form uh, is middle, then you're probably dealing with a middle only uh, verb and you won't have a passive voice in most cases. You can also ask, what's the context? 
uh, you can try understanding the verb as a passive first. And then if that doesn't work, or if it doesn't make very good sense, you can try the middle. And just ask which one makes better sense in this situation. Since we're introducing the middle and passive uh, voice, we also need to look at uh, the effect that the middle passive voice has on moods other than the indicative mood. So we've already learned about present active imperative verbs, giving instructions or orders. And the uh, imperative takes different endings in the middle passive. So uh, here are the present middle passive endings. And what you can notice here is that in three of the four forms, all we've done is taken the tau from the active imperative endings and substituted a sigma theta. So in the second person plural, poruetta, go, plural, uh, becomes uh, poruestha. In the third person plural, the active ending, which would be uh, poruetto, uh, since this is middle, becomes poruestho. And the third person plural, uh, where the active ending would be poruetosan, uh, since poru amai is a, a middle only verb, we need the sigma theta there and it becomes poruesthosan. The irregular form uh, of the present middle passive imperative is once again the second person singular. And uh, in the uh, active imperative, this was just an epsilon. Uh, we said lue. Uh, here, it's not an epsilon, but the omicron uh, upsilon diphthong. So poru u is the way of telling one person uh, directly go. The infinitive also has a different ending in the middle passive voice. So the uh, present active infinitive to release or to let go was luane. And in the middle passive, the ending becomes esthai. Uh, and so the uh, present middle passive infinitive of luo is luesthai, which means not to release or to set free, but to be released, to be set free. Uh, one thing to notice here is that, uh, again, we have that sigma theta uh, ending, uh, or the core to the ending that we saw in the uh, middle passive imperative verbs. So if you can remember that sigma theta uh, is connected with middle passive, that can help you remember both the uh, middle passive imperative and this middle passive infinitive form. Just remember that with middle only verbs, uh, these verbs with action that we would translate with uh, an active verb in English, uh, there's not going to be an active uh, infinitive, a present active infinitive. So there is no poruane. Uh, the only infinitive we have for this verb is middle, poruesthai, and that just means to go. You can learn more about the present middle and passive voices in Mounts's Basics of Biblical Greek in the third edition. I've provided you with the section and page numbers, and in Wallace's Basics of New Testament Syntax and I've given you the page numbers for the first edition.